are you, my friend? I'm fantastic, Casey. Great to be with you. Thanks for joining us, man. You know, I was thinking the other day as I knew we were coming upon this and I'm like, man, I've known you for, I think it's 20 years now, uh, you know, when we met at, at the gym in Rockville and, you know, I was training to kind of increase my stamina and endurance for live performances. You remember that? And, and you were, you know, helping athletes uh, become elite. And it, it's, it's incredible how far you've come. No, I appreciate that. You know, one of the reasons I think you and I always got along so well is uh, I always remember admiring and respecting uh, you for for you trying to master your craft because that was exactly what I was trying to do. And it's it's really neat to circle back 20 years later and and see how far we both have come. And to be honest, I don't think either one of us have aged a bit. I think we look just <laughs> as good as we just as good as we looked 20 years ago. <laughs> I'd like to think so, man. Uh, <laughs> Well, let me ask you a question, man. With with all that said, I know you've spent a lot of time, uh, you know, teaching companies and people how to be more productive. Uh, given the current situation with COVID nineteen, you know, how are you staying productive and clear headed through this crisis? And what sage advice do you have for others? Well, first and foremost, I mean, we are living in really challenging times right now. Uh, but but what gives me a little bit of serenity and peace is I wake up every single morning and say to myself, I'm just going to do the best I can with what I have where I am. That's it. I realize we're all riddled with so many limitations right now and that nothing in the world is ideal. But I'm still going to do the best I can with what I have where I am. And I'm being really sensitive to doing my very best to not complain, to not make excuses, and to not blame anyone or anything. And, and I say that with a smile because as, as basic as that may sound, that's not easy to do. I'm well aware that right now there are plenty of things to complain about, plenty of things to, to blame or to make excuses about. Uh, but you know as well as I do, doing those three things won't improve our situation and they won't make things any better. So I, I, I look at those things as almost like an emotional weight vest. And I simply want to take that weight vest off so I can be much more nimble. And instead, I tend to focus on my own attitude and my own effort, because those are really the only things I have 100% control over. Wow. No, that makes sense. And, you know, I was looking back, and I know you tell a signature story about meeting the late, great Kobe Bryant for the first time. Um, and how do you think that story is applicable to everyone at Boston Beer, if you don't mind sharing? Oh, I definitely don't mind. It's my favorite story ever. And and even though it's been well over a decade, it, it still gives me the goosebumps to tell it. Well, back in 2007, uh, Nike actually flew me out to Los Angeles to work the first ever Kobe Bryant Skills Academy. So Nike decided to bring in the best high school and college players from around the country for the best player in the world. And, and I know you love basketball as much as I do, but for any of your colleagues that aren't aware, in 2007, Kobe was the best player in the game. And I grew up in a basketball bubble, so I had always heard this urban legend of how insanely intense his individual workouts were. Well, now that I found myself on his camp staff, I figured this was my chance. This was my shot. So at my earliest opportunity, I walked up to Kobe and asked if I could watch one of his private workouts. He was incredibly gracious, and he said, sure, man, no problem. I'm going tomorrow at 4. And I got a little bit confused because I had just got done looking through the camp schedule and the camp schedule said that the first workout with the players was the following day at 3.30. And, and Kobe recognized that confused look on my face and he quickly <laughs> clarified that with, yeah, that's 4 a.m. Well, I, I couldn't think of a reason on why I couldn't be somewhere at 4 in the morning. So I'd committed myself to being there and I figured if I'm going to be there anyway, I may as well try and impress Kobe. I may as well show him how serious of a trainer I was. So I came up with the plan to beat him to the gym. So I set my alarm for 3 a.m. The alarm goes off, I jump up, I get myself dressed, I hop in a cab and I head to the gym. And when I arrive, it's 3.30 in the morning, so it's pitch black outside. And yet the moment I step out of the cab, I can see that the gym light is already on. Even from the parking lot, I could faintly hear a ball bouncing and sneakers squeaking. Wow. I walk in the side door, Casey, and Kobe's already in a full sweat. See, he was going through an intense warm-up before his official workout with his trainer started at four. Well, out of professional courtesy, I didn't say anything to him. I didn't say anything to his trainer. I just sat down to watch. And for the first 45 minutes, I was shocked. For the first 45 minutes, I watched the best player in the world do the most basic footwork and offensive moves. 
He was doing stuff that I had routinely taught to middle school age players. Now, this is Kobe Bryant, so let's not get it twisted. <laughs> he was doing everything at an unparalleled level of effort, and he was doing everything with surgical precision. But the stuff he was doing was very, very basic. Now, the whole workout lasted a couple hours, and when it was over again, I didn't say anything to him or his trainer. I just quietly left. But boy, my curiosity kept nipping away at me, and, and I had to know. So later that day at camp, I went up to him again, and I said, Kobe, you're the best player in the world. Why are you doing such basic drills? And he flashed that million-dollar smile and said with a wink, why do you think I'm the best player in the world? Because I never get bored with the basics. I never get bored with the basics. Kobe Bryant, the best player on the planet and someone that has truly mastered his craft said his secret is that he never gets bored with the basics. And as obvious as that may sound to everybody listening right now, that was a life-changing lesson for me. It was at that moment that I realized that just because something is basic, it doesn't mean that it's easy. If it was easy, everyone else would be doing it. And you guys know, we, we live in a world that tells us it's okay to skip steps. Tells us we should always be looking for a shortcut or a hack. But anytime we do those things, we're making a huge mistake because the basics work. They always have and they always will. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to improve something personally or professionally. If you're trying to improve something individually or organizationally, the very first step is admitting that the basics work. But you also have to acknowledge that implementing the basics and the fundamentals every single day is never ever going to be easy. And, and I share that with, with you and your amazing colleagues because if, if you won't want to continue to be elite and continue to separate yourself from everyone else, don't worry about chasing the shiny and the flashy and the sexy. Have a relentless commitment, especially during the unseen hours, to mastering the basics. So one of the first things you have to ask yourself are what are the basics I need to master to be great in my role with Boston Beer Company. And if you can figure out what those basics are and work relentlessly towards mastering them, you guys will continue to elevate the way you have been. That's powerful, Alan. Yeah, and I think, and I and I, I have felt that myself, you know, is, is, you know, like you said, there's a hack for everything, there's a shortcut. And, and sometimes, you know, when we do the basics, it feels boring. But, but anytime you've done something for a length of time, you know, there is, there is this mastery that can be achieved and, and that in and of itself is worth the journey through some of the boring stuff. So I hear well you. Said. Um, right, well said. I've also heard you say before that guys like Kobe maximize their performance and productivity by focusing on three things. Can you share what those are? Yeah, and I tell you what, Casey, those three things are the, the same things that I'm trying to work on right now, uh, especially during this global pandemic. And these are three things that if everybody listening can learn to focus on, uh, you'll not only see your performance go up, which I know is important, uh, but equally important, you'll see your happiness and your fulfillment go up as well, which ultimately is what we're all trying to achieve. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is the ability to always move to the next play, which means no matter what happens, you simply refocus your lens on the next play. You know, I did spend most of my life in basketball, so you all will have to excuse the basketball analogy. But, but if a player misses a layup, like that play is over. Move to the next play. You know, if they turn the ball over, it's not ideal, but we have to move to the next play. If the referee misses a call, I get it. It's not perfect, but we have to move to the next play. Because anytime we spend worrying about the play that just happened, we're taking away our mental, physical, and emotional energy to deposit in what's happening now. And the present moment is always what's most important. So no matter what happens, because uh, I'm, I'm sure we're not completely out of the dark with COVID-19. We're going to continue to have new limitations and new guidelines and all sorts of stuff. And the quicker you can move to the next play, the better off you'll be. Uh, the second thing that we need to focus on, I kind of teed up earlier, is we just have to learn how to focus on what we can control. It's controlling the controllables, and that's our own effort and our own attitude. Uh, we're responsible, each and every one of us, for showing up every single day, even if it's virtually, and giving the best effort that we are capable of. Working hard is a choice, but there is also another side of that coin, which means not working hard is also a choice. And if you want to be happy and fulfilled and successful, you can't choose that very often. And then on the attitude side, it really comes down to how do we choose to respond to the things going on in our life? 
you know, I, I can say with a wink that you and I had some technical difficulties before we got going <laughs> to the yeah. tune of almost an hour that it took for us to be yeah. able to do this. Yeah. And, and neither one of us got bent out of shape or frazzled or rattled uh, because we chose a response that would actually help the situation. And when, when IT is not working for you, getting upset and cursing and throwing stuff doesn't make the situation better. Instead, we chose to laugh, stay composed, and troubleshoot in any way that we could, and now here we are face to face. So we chose a response that moved us forward. So no matter what life throws at you, good, bad, or indifferent, always choose a response that, that, that moves you forward. And then the last one is just learn how to trust and respect the process. Uh, whatever your goals are, that's your North Star, but you don't need to spend a lot of time worried about the North Star. What you need to focus on is the process of what it'll take to get there. And here's the best way I can explain it. I'm 44 years old. I know I look 24, but no, seriously, I'm 44 years old. And I've got this, this loose vision of the man I want to be 20 years from now. So who do I want the 64-year-old Alan to be? Well, without going into too much detail, I want the 64-year-old Alan to be physically, mentally, and emotionally fit. I want the 64-year-old Alan to have a deep connection with his children and his friends and his family and his closest clients and colleagues. I want the 64-year-old Alan to be doing what he considers meaningful work in service of other people. So that's my North Star. That's who I want to be. But what I focus on is my daily behavior. And every single decision I make in my life, Casey, I quickly run through the filter of, is this going to take me closer to being that guy or is this going to take me further away? From who I follow on Instagram to what I eat for lunch, I ask myself, is this going to increase the chance that I become that guy or decrease the chance? And then obviously my goal every single day is to consistently choose the option that's going to take me closer as often as possible. But I'm not perfect. I'm not batting a thousand. I'll make some, I'll have some lapses in judgment and I'll make some mistakes. But if I can consistently pick the right choice, then that's inevitably I'm designing my own future. And, and I'm well aware of the fact that time is not promised. There is no guarantee that I'll even live to see the age of 60. But if I do, I'm pretty confident that that's the man that I'll become because these are the decisions I'm making now. So I don't get too caught up in, in the, the end result. I get caught up in what I'm doing today. And, and on that note, here's a question that I would love for each and every one of you to ask yourself every night before you go to bed. Say, I just traded 24 hours of my life for the progress that I made today. Am I happy with that trade? And if most nights when you go to bed, you can smile and say, yes, I'm happy with that trade, then you're on the right course. Yeah. Alan, thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's, you know, we don't see each other as much as we used to, but I have an enormous amount of respect for you. And, you know, I just really appreciate, you know, um, you know, you coming on and, and spending this time today. I know it means a great deal to you and it certainly means a great deal to me. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty active on social media. So anybody listening, if you'd like to connect and, and you'd like to ask me a question or throw something my way, uh, you can find me pretty easily just at Alan Stein Jr. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever your favorite platform is. Uh, just tell me you're part of the Boston Beer Company family. Uh, and if there's ever anything I can do to serve you guys, it, it would be my honor to do it. Uh, and Casey, I, I think the world of you, my friend, and it's it's I'm very thankful that that we can still connect after 20 years. Thank you so much, Alan. Right back at you, my brother. Stay safe, man.